So, I've said it before that a lot of these hardcore Brexiteers suffer from, I don't know, post-imperial withdrawal syndrome? I suppose that's the best you can <laughs> describe it as. But where you've got stories like this coming up, and it's funny to go back to the video where I said that Britain is pining for its colonial past and there are all these Brexiteers pushing for it and then you have all these people in the comments going no that's not what we're pushing for, we're pushing for something else completely and then you get articles like this and I'm like hmm really do tell me more about how you're not pining for your lost colonial past Mr Brexiteer who wasn't alive in the colonial days, in the good old colonial days um, but this is just un undoubtedly ridiculous. Because bear in mind, this is from Gavin Williamson, who is the Defence Secretary. And it, 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 honestly, he sounds like this is like the Defence Secretary of Queen Victoria, back of, you know, the Gladstone Park. <laughs> but, you know, this is literally what he, he said. Um, hang on, let me just find it. Yes, that Britain will open two new military bases in the Caribbean and the Southeast Asia as the country as the country looks to step up its military presence after Brexit. Gavin Williamson has revealed. Why is why why is having a, a military base in the Caribbean and the the Southeast Asia Sea? important. Oh, that's right, because it's it's reviving all those post-colonial fantasies. <sighs> that, that's, that's where we are. Um, that the, the Defence Secretary is pursuing a imperi a, a, <coughs> an imperialist defence policy to have these naval bases, which will cost Britain millions of pounds, and not only millions, billions of pounds a year, not only to build, but to maintain money, which, by the way, when we leave the EU, we don't have. And by the way, I just want to point out, he makes the allusion to this in the article, that apparently we can't do this now. Uh, the EU has no say or anything like that. If we want to go and open a, a naval base in, in, Argent in Argentina or, you know, South Africa, the EU doesn't care. It's not that they can't do anything about it because we are a sovereign nation within the EU, despite Brexiteers claims. Um, but it, it's just unbelievable. And then, and then, just to top off this uh, this Im imperialistic attitude, he goes on to say this. The Defence Secretary urges Britons to stop downplaying the country's influence internationally and recognise that UK will stand tall on the world stage after leaving the European Union. In an interview with The Telegraph in his Ministry of Defence office, Mr Williams says, We are... <coughs> We have got to be more optimistic about our future as we exit the European Union. If only we smile a little more, everything will be all right. I, I, what? What? <laughs> what? <laughs> this is what I, I, I get about. These these guys, um, the breakfast to your attitude of oh, we've only got to be optimistic and everything will be fine. So, that's not how the world works. That's not how you you plan for a business. You don't open a business randomly and just go, this shop will be fine. I'm optimistic. That that that's not how a business runs. That's not even how a country should run. You know. Um, Theresa May just doesn't go, pff, 29, you know, a day, Philip Hammond, the Chancellor, doesn't, just, just doesn't go, pff, I'm not going to set a budget, I'm just going to be optimistic about it, it'll be fine. Who, who says that? I'll tell you who, this guy, Gavin Williamson, who is suffering from post-imperial uh, withdrawal symptoms, that's what, because he's gone and suggested 
and touted a an imperial defence scenario where Britain must have bases, strategic naval bases around the world so it can rule the waves. That was essentially the uh, uh, the actual post-Napoleonic, what's called as post-Nelsonian thought, uh, if you want to go look it up. So... <laughs> Yeah, um, and this is all but a fluff piece, by the way. This is this is just to go and puff out the masses to distract them from the fact that Theresa May has been busy all Christmas trying to get reassurances and get extra stuff from the EU and phoning up leaders who, have, when she's phoned up and asked them, just said, no, sorry, you're talking to the wrong person. You've got to be talking to Michelle Barnier about this and just put the phone down on her, apparently. But that's that's how we. This is this is what's going to happen. We're not optimistic when we are leaving the biggest single market there is in the world. Not only that, but the most successful single market. <coughs> and we are saying we are not going to be a part of it, and we are going to pursue our own trade policy, which will make it then difficult to trade into. <sighs> yeah. Congrats, guys. Congrats. Um, yeah, uh, Brexiteers are idiots, even though I know people don't say me like that. And I know in the past I've said we've got to reach out to these Brexiteers and not call them idiots. But I'm sorry, when I see things like this that are applauded by these guys, um, I really have to question it. I'm sorry, but I really do. There's a hardcore group who were completely and utterly... Um, living in another planet where they literally think that post as soon as we leave in March the British Empire is going to come back and stories like this just reinforce them and if you don't believe me remember when we read that Yorkshire I've still got it I've got to get rid of this when we still got it and where was it um, what would the, what would the guy said Uh, but, but, uh, yeah. If Remainers win, Britain will be punished by the EU for daring to challenge its authority. Germany may well seize the opportunity to score back for its humiliation in 1918 and 1945. That's actually real, and that was in a newspaper. Someone wrote in and thought, I've got a brilliant idea and letter to share to the editor. I'm going to write that, and it's going to be published in a, a oh, it's the Yorkshire Post, but a, a regional newspaper that is sold nationally. Yeah. <coughs> I'm just going to read that and let that sink in. If Remainers win, Britain will be penalised by the EU for daring to challenge its authority, and Germany may well seize the opportunity to score, score back for its humiliation in 1918 and 1945. Someone thought that was a good idea to write into a newspaper. He is not alone. There are hundreds of people who think like that. And that is part of why Brexit happened and these hardcore Brexiteers who champion and support this. It's, it's imperial withdrawal syndrome. Um, I, I don't know if it's a real thing. I suspect it might be. Who knows? But there you go. Whew.